All right. Welcome, everyone. I truly want to thank you for watching, and I hope this video will help us better understand how to refine sterling silver, uh, or 925 silver, which is 92.5% silver, and refine that into 99% pure silver. So first, I take a thousand milliliters of distilled water and we pour that into a two liter beaker. And then we're gonna start adding our sterling silver. There's many ways to clean silver. Um, I soak these pieces in hot soapy water for 24 hours and then I put them in the dishwasher. And now here you can see I'm heating them up with the torch to get rid of any residual debris or oils that may be left on the silver. And then we're putting them into the beaker of distilled water. And while that's heating up, we're going to add nitric acid. And this is about 350 grams of sterling silver. So it's about one milliliter of nitric acid for every gram of sterling silver. And that, that depends now on what type of silver you're putting in there. This is not rolled and these are thicker pieces of sterling. So you're on the higher end. You're you know closer to one full milliliter per gram. If you have thinner silver, uh, silver foils or um, say candlesticks or if you roll your silver you'll use much less nitric acid you can cut that by about half so now that we have everything up to temperature I'm gonna take it off the heat here for a moment we're not in danger of a boil over um, you do get concerned about a boil over when you have hot metal and you're pouring acid onto hot metal. But now we have everything up to a boil and the reaction's taking place. So for better viewing, um, we're gonna continue the boil this way and I will kind of give you a close up look of what the acid does as it reacts with the silver. So as the nitric acid reacts with the sterling silver, which is 92% silver and roughly 8% copper, um, at an atomic level, the ions are actually being bumped off the piece and they're being um, displaced into the water, which creates a gas, nitrogen dioxide, which is that maroon gas that you see kind of hovering above the solution. So we fast forward about an hour. I've added nitric acid two more times for a total of about 90 milliliters of nitric acid. And now I want to pour off this solution and we'll get some fresh acid on the silver. Um, all the silver is not dissolved yet, but we're going to take this acid off and filter it. So we'll just rinse down the side of the beaker. Also, you know, rinse off the lid. Um, now I use a number two Wattman filter paper. There's a few different types of paper this, that I've tried. Um, this works very well in number two. Um, you want to wet your paper with distilled water. Don't want to use tap water in this process. You might develop chlorides that are unwanted and then it adds a step. So I let the solution cool to about 120 degrees and now we're going to pour it through a filter. It's important now to remember that the silver nitrate, which is the blue liquid that we're pouring off here through the filter, it has both silver and copper in it, along with any other base metals that have, might have been alloyed into the sterling silver. And so from this point forward, now we want to purify this liquid and separate the metals out of it. You can see in this filter, it's actually picked up quite a bit of debris, some of it which might just be dirt, and some of it which is probably some silver that uh, poured over and wasn't fully dissolved. It's wise to run your solution back through the same filter two or maybe even three times. Then I want to make sure all of the nitric acid has been consumed in the reaction. Excess nitric at this point will cause a loss of time and profit. 
So as I pour the solution out over a silver spoon, I'm looking for any fumes. If I notice any fumes, I'll allow the reaction to continue with the silver spoon in the beaker until it's completely exhausted. It's important to have some nitric left in the solution. You don't want it completely stalled for the next step. Now I noticed there was not a lot of fumes, so I removed the spoon from the solution. And I rinsed the spoon off back into the dish. All of the blue liquid has silver in it. And now for the cool part. I add a pure copper bar that I poured previously into the silver nitrate solution and the silver plates out immediately onto the copper bar. So the reason this reaction takes place is because copper is lower on the periodic table than silver. So if you have silver in solution and you add a massive amount of copper, you're going to bump all the silver out of the solution and copper will take its place. Here I sped up about three minutes of footage. The entire process usually takes hours and then I let it settle overnight. So here is what it looks like after 24 hours and we wanna take the copper bar out of the solution and rinse the silver off of it. As you can see here, the silver stuck to the copper bar on the top more than it did on the bottom due to the excess oxygen that was in the liquid. Um, it washes off quite easy. At this point, all of the steps are about separating the copper, which is in solution, from the silver, which has plated out on the copper bar and is now a solid. So we're going to repeatedly rinse this solution, and every time we do a rinse, we're getting rid of more and more of the copper. This process of separating copper and silver is called cementation. The silver is cementing out on the copper, and the copper is going into solution, taking its place. As we rinse the silver over and over again, we're removing more and more of the copper as we pour it off. You'll also notice the color of the liquid that we pour off will get lighter with each rinse. Here we ran out of room in that first beaker, so I grabbed a larger 2 liter beaker to continue pouring off the copper. Knowing that we can't get 100% purity using this process, we'll continue rinsing until the liquid is fairly clear or mostly clear. The only way to achieve close to 100% purity of silver is with an electrolytic silver cell, which I have a video coming up shortly, and I'll have that posted coming up in a couple weeks. So once we're satisfied that we rinse off enough of the copper, we'll put it up on a hot plate. And I will, with a pipette, siphon out the last remaining solution. After about eight hours, the cement silver will completely dry out and then I will break it up into smaller pieces and I'll pour it into a dish that I've already pre-calculated the weight on so I can kind of keep a running total of how much cement silver I have. Time to preheat the crucible and coat it with borax. So we'll get the furnace started. Now I always put a piece of cardboard underneath my crucibles that prevents them from sticking to the bottom. And now here we have a crucible that I've used maybe five or six times and I wanna get a light coat of borax on it. 
So we need to just heat it up about, um, you know, somewhere over a thousand degrees. We don't need to go all the way up like we would if we were melting silver. So we're just going to bring it up to temperature in the furnace. Here we're going to turn the blower on. Cover and we'll let it get up to temperature. Should take less than 10 minutes or so. Now it's time to add the borax. Here I just add a light coat of borax and I allow it to kind of just shower the whole area um, and get a fair amount inside the crucible. Obviously, you need to be wearing a respirator for this part of the process. This will just provide a light coat on the entire crucible, which helps prevent the silver from sticking. And then we'll put the cover back on and we'll let that heat up for about another 5 to 10 minutes. So after 5 minutes, Here's what the crucible looks like. It's red hot, probably around 1200 degrees. We'll let it cool for approximately five hours. And you'll see there's quite a bit of borax left in the bottom of the crucible, which is good. That's what I'd like. And now here we're gonna load our charge, the cement silver that we prepared earlier. We're gonna put that into the crucible now. I've tried to think of every way I can to do this without spilling, but nevertheless, I spilled. Three hundred and twenty four point five three grams. So, let's get that melted up. Another piece of cardboard in the furnace. Load your crucible charged with silver. And light the torch. Crank up the gas. Flip on the blower, eh? So we'll cover it with the lid and bring it up to temperature. Now the melting temperature of silver is 1763 Fahrenheit and 961 Celsius. The whole melt took about 15 minutes and we're ready now to take the crucible out of the furnace. We're going to pour a silver shot in my homemade lava funnel that you can see just over my shoulder here. I'll be sure and uh, make a future video showing in better detail this uh, funnel. So at the bottom of the lava slide is a metal bucket and I retrieve the silver and pan out the debris. That's mostly the borax left over and any slag that was left over in the melt. And then we're going to dry it out so we can get a weight on it. Now we can weigh up our silver. We'll put the jar on the scale and tear it to zero. 
and then we'll add our silver to the beaker and get a final weight. And we ended up with 306.92 grams of 99% pure silver. Thank you very much for watching and may all your days be blessed.